Welcome back guys, I am Largo and today we are checking out a commenter suggestion. That suggestion being that we check out some of the Kurzagat videos. I am well aware of these guys and I have watched quite a few of their animations in my own time. And uh, I really, really like these guys. So let's go ahead and check one out. And we're gonna start with the Black Hole Star, the most recent one that they put out. Black hole stars may have been the largest stars that ever existed. They burned brighter than galaxies and were larger than any star today or that could ever exist in the future. But besides their scale, what makes them special and weird is that deep inside, they were occupied by a cosmic parasite, an endlessly hungry black hole. What? How is that even possible? Black hole stars take the way- Okay, so yeah, um... Before he gets going, uh, brr, what? A black hole inside of a star. I mean, wouldn't the black hole consume the star from the inside? I mean, I've never heard of such a thing before. So, okay, um, really, really curious about this. Weirdness of black holes and go beyond to break everything we know about how stars form and grow. They were only possible during a short window of time in the early universe, but if they existed, they would solve one of the largest mysteries of cosmology. Black hole stars were excessive any way you look at them. The most massive stars today may have about 300 solar masses. A black hole star had up to 10 million solar masses of nearly pure hydrogen. What? Let's take a moment to look at what this means visually. The Sun, Wesson, LL Pegasi, the largest star, and finally, the black hole star. What? Its scale is beyond words. Over 800,000 times wider than our sun, 380 times larger than the largest star we know today. And far below its surface is a black hole, growing rapidly as it devours billions upon billions of tons of matter per second. Normally, stars are born from gigantic clouds, collections of thousands or millions of solar masses of mostly hydrogen. Right. In these clouds, matter starts to accumulate around the densest spots inside. As these spots get denser, their gravitational pull intensifies and they grow faster. Eventually, they generate so much heat and pressure that they ignite fusion reactions and a new star is born. Right. But this puts a limit on their size. Nuclear fusion releases enough radiation energy that the surrounding gas cloud is blown away. The new baby star can't gather more mass. From now on, the star is living on the edge between two forces. Gravity pulling in, trying to squash the star, and radiation created by fusion pushing outwards, trying to blow the star apart. After millions or billions of years, the core runs out of fuel and the balance breaks, destroying the star. But black hole stars were very, very different. I mean, they would have to be because there should be some kind of limit on how large a star could be before it becomes so massive that it, it collapses in on itself, creating a black hole. I really enjoy learning about space, and so I kind of, you know, pride myself a little bit on having a pretty good grasp and understanding on a lot of the things that happen and a lot of the things that tend to shape our universe that we live in, as well as having a decent grasp on the concept of scale when it comes to things. Uh, not only things here on Earth, like how large things are, but also out in the universe. Uh, people... It's actually very difficult to, to really, truly understand scale when it comes to a cosmic level because things are so astronomically large. Distances in space are so ridiculously massive. Every kind of model or representation of the universe or the solar system, anything like that, is typically very, very condensed. Even when you look at just our own specific solar system that we live in, when we look at models of that solar system, it's very squashed together, very condensed so that we can see it all at once. 
what they're talking about here is something on a scale so large that it almost breaks any concept of as far as mass and stars and the, how stars can be created and how stars can even exist or maintain their size. The beasts of the early universe. A few hundred million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was much smaller, all the matter in existence was much more concentrated. Right. The universe was much denser and hotter. Dark matter was a dominant player, forming giant structures called dark matter halos. These dark matter halos were so massive that they pulled in and concentrated unimaginably gigantic amounts of hydrogen gas, becoming the birthplaces of the first stars and galaxies. Epic clouds of hydrogen formed, some as massive as 100 million suns, more than the mass of small galaxies. In this unique environment that will never exist again, the enormous gravitational pull of the dark matter halos drew gas into its center and created extremely massive stars. As we said before, when a star is born, it blows away the gas cloud that created it. But these titanic gas clouds in the early universe were so large and massive that even after their birth, more and more gas piled on the newborn star, making it grow to unbelievable proportions. The young star is forced to grow and grow and grow, getting more and more massive, until in some cases, it reaches up to 10 million times the mass of our sun. Crushed by gravity, its core gets hotter and hotter, desperately pushing outwards, trying to blow itself apart, but to no avail. There's too much mass and too much pressure. The balance is impossible to uphold. Like a supernova on fast forward, the core gets crushed into a black hole. Normally, that would be the end. Today, stars go supernova, a black hole forms, and things calm down. But in this case, the star survives its own death. A tremendous explosion rocks the star from the inside, but it's not enough. The star is so large and massive that not even a supernova can destroy it. But now, it has a black hole for a heart. Wow! It's tiny, a few tens of kilometers in the center of a thing the size of the solar system. The monster grows. Stars are born from ever faster spinning and collapsing gas, and so they also spin. When a black hole is born from the core of a star, it keeps its angular momentum. This means that matter that gets drawn in doesn't just fall in a straight line, but instead begins orbiting the black hole right, in right. smaller and smaller circles, going faster and faster. The result is an accretion disk where gas orbits at nearly the speed of light. Only a small amount of gas actually falls in at any given moment. Basically, black holes put a lot of food on the table and only nibble at it. But the matter trapped in the accretion disk doesn't have a good time. Friction and collisions between particles heat it up to temperatures of millions of degrees. Actively feeding black holes have accretion disks that are incredibly hot and powerful. This heat from the disk further restricts how much a black hole can devour, just like the core of stars. The super hot material creates radiation that blows away most of the food within its reach. So even if a black hole had access to as much food as it desired, it can only grow slowly. A black hole embedded inside a black hole star is different. The enormous pressure surrounding it pushes down matter directly into the black hole, overcoming all restrictions on how fast it can consume. This process is so violent and releases so much energy that the accretion disk becomes hotter and releases more radiation pressure than any star core ever could. Enough to push back against the weight of 10 million suns. That's insane! An impossibly dangerous balance has been created. Millions of soda masses pushing in, the angry radiation of a force-fed black hole pushing out. For the next few million years, the black hole star is consumed from within. The black hole grows to thousands of solar masses, and the bigger it gets, the faster it eats, which heats up the star even more and causes it to expand. In its final phase, the black hole star has become over 30 times wider than our solar system, Ooh. truly the largest star to ever exist in the universe. The intense magnetic fields at its core spew out jets of plasma from the black hole's poles, which pierce through the star and shoot out into space, turning it into a cosmic beacon. Oh, good lord. Wow, I got, dude, I got goosebumps. Like, dude, the, oh, the, the scale of this thing 
whew, is incredible. I mean, just I can't. It's it's hard to even put into words. I mean, you're talking about a star that formed, but because of the density of the the cloud that it was in. None of that stuff got pushed away and continued to get pulled in to the star by gravity, increasing its mass to such high levels that the interior collapses into a black hole, but the star is already so astronomically huge that it doesn't explode. It's, it has so much mass that a black hole can exist inside of it and because it's there's so much mass involved here it's it's literally pushing that mass down into the black hole like they said like force feeding the black hole until it erupts into what is essentially a quasar bigger than anything you could imagine to exist today i mean the way they're representing it here with these giant green beams of energy I mean, this thing is so big that those beams could annihilate entire solar systems. <laughs> I mean, this has got to be one of the most powerful and energy-filled things that we've ever conceived of in the universe. And that's saying something. That is insane. It must have been one of the most awe-inducing sights to ever exist in the universe. Yeah. But this also marks the end. It becomes too stretched and the accretion disk within too powerful. The parasite destroys its host, blowing it apart. Goodness. A black hole with the mass of 100,000 suns rips its way out to hunt for new prey while leaving behind nothing but a star carcass. The supermassive question. If black hole stars existed, they could explain one of the greatest mysteries of the universe. The supermassive black holes we see at the center of galaxies oh. are just too big. They this is how supermassive black holes are created. Black holes born from regular supernovas can be a few tens of solar masses at most. And because of the process we explained before, they grow slowly after that. If black holes merge, they can form slightly larger black holes of over a hundred solar masses. This is basically how we always assumed super uh, supermassive black holes were created, was simply the smaller black holes merging into each other. But man, this makes so much more sense. Because black holes merging would take so long. Not only the process of merging, but more so the process of two black holes actually getting close enough to each other to merge. Uh, like I was saying earlier, the distances in space are so astronomically large that it really doesn't matter how big your black hole is, the odds of it running into another black hole and then pulling each other into each other via gravity is, is just very small. It's very, very small because space is very, 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 very big. So this actually makes more sense as to the creation of the supermassive black holes than the theory of them simply merging together, which, you know, I'm, I'm sure does happen, but this, make, this makes so much more sense. Man, this is insane. It is. It should take billions and billions of years to make black holes with hundreds of thousands or right. even millions of solar masses. And yet, we know that some supermassive black holes already had 800 million solar masses only 690 million years after the Big Bang. Black hole stars are a sort of black hole cheat code. If they formed very early in our universe, and the black holes that emerged from them were thousands of solar masses, then they could be the seeds for supermassive black holes. These seeds could take root in the center of the earliest galaxies, merging with others and drawing in enough matter to grow quickly and reliably. Very soon, we may be able to verify their past existence. The James Webb Space Telescope is turning its sensors to explore the farthest reaches of the universe, looking back in time, back to the early universe that we couldn't see before. So, with luck, 
we might be able to witness glimpses of these tragic titans in the brief moment between their formation and destruction. Until then, let's do the visual journey again, just for fun. Stars are big, black hole stars bigger. And honestly, even this depiction doesn't do it justice, the kind of scale they're talking about. It's so... It's almost incomprehensible, honestly. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That was Kurzagat's video on the black hole star. Something that has absolutely blown my mind because this is on a scale that's, it's frankly unprecedented. I mean, <laughs> it would answer some questions about the creation of supermassive black holes. And it's just like a glimpse at how much energy was so closely contained in the early universe before it had billions or trillions of years to expand and spread its uh, cosmic essence out across the universe. And the guys at Kurzagat, man, they friggin' killed it with this animation. The sound design, right? That, that sound design while they're talking with that music in the background, it just made everything like a hundred times more epic. If you guys have not seen Kurzagat videos, I highly encourage you to go check out their YouTube page. They do phenomenal work at explaining oftentimes very complicated things in a very digestible manner. Uh, I absolutely love the work these guys do, so please go check their video out. Their links will be in the description. And as far as the video as a whole, my goodness, uh, absolutely loved it. It's been quite a while since I've watched something that has given me that sense of awe. Hats off to these guys. Absolutely appreciate that, that sense of wonder and awe that they've given me. I, I just love it. And I hope you guys got as much out of this video as I did. And I hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. If you did, go ahead and click that like button. As always, consider clicking that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out and keeps you up to date with the most recent reactions that come out. And leave a comment down below. Let me know your suggestions for the next video we should check out. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for watching the video. Take care of yourselves and have a great day. Thank you.